Hey guys, welcome to a new Blender Absolute Beginner tutorial. This is episode 10. I'm um, actually surprised I made it through whole 10. I continue, I plan on continuing this series and keeping it going as long as I can and as long as I can keep your interest. So today is going to be more on materials. Materials is always fun. I think everybody really just wants to jump into materials from the get-go. Today I'm going to talk about putting a picture onto a shape and also a very this is going to be an introduction to UV mapping. Now if you came here looking for a full tutorial on UV mapping you might be disappointed this is going to be an introduction to it. I'll show you how to work with it but I'm not going to give you you know tips and all that because I'm new to it myself. So hopefully this will kind of teach you a beginning to it and you can go on from there. So let's get started. In Blender what we're going to do is we're just going to work with this simple cube today and working with materials as usual we're going to need some good lighting so just right click on that shift D to duplicate and move it over there and now hit F12 to make sure you have good lighting and you're good to go so hit escape to get back now with your cube selected we're not going to change the shape at all today we're just going to keep it a cube keep things simple but make sure it's select selected and it'll probably be in object mode at this point come over to the materials tab the circu circular colored icon and you'll notice on the top something that I didn't explain before you'll notice this cube is kind of a parent of the material properties so if we came over here say and renamed the cube to my cube I can't type and we came back to materials it would be the material of my cube so every object has its own material or materials and this is that we're going to go further with this later but I just wanted to point it out here so let's apply a simple material and we'll call this one sides and you'll see why later we're going to change the diffuse color to a nice bold red so we can tell that it's the sides the one we set and that's all we're going to do then we're going to come in here and we're going to add another material so hit the plus sign over here go to new rename this material call this one top and let's make it something starkly contrasting like a uh, teal I know this is going to be extremely ugly but just bear with me it's just so you can tell what's what really easily so you'll notice if we render this now it's red why is that we still have, we have two materials one's teal and one's red well the top material is what's applied first and I think foremost I'm not sure if you have two materials what it does with the default with the second material but I know one way to assign it directly so if you switch to edit mode with tab go to face select and just select the top and you'll notice if we select any of these sides is highlighted up here so with the top go top selected go to top and click assign and you'll notice it automatically updates it in here and if we render it now then it's exactly what we wanted. We have two materials and notice they're both still under my cube. So my cube has two materials, top and sides. Now, that's a simple thing with materials, just to show you how to assign different different uh, materials to different uh, sides and, and faces in the same object. Now, come over to textures. And on textures, you might have a default one called text. I think I deleted mine. So let's start a new one. Or you can just go with the one called text and we'll call this one simple mat. No, simple text. Because it's not a material, it's a texture. We don't want clouds, we want to go to an image or movie. I made a, a simple image in the GIMP program. It's a lot like Photoshop if you've ever used Photoshop. So I'm going to open that now and that's on my desktop it's called simple mat so I'll go open and you'll see it's tiled here on the side there's it's th tiled three times it's a simple square 1024 by 1024 and all the black you see here is actually should be transparent it's what's called an alpha channel and that measures uh, basically transparency so if you click show alpha you can actually see checkerboard behind things that are transparent and come over to both and you'll see if we do the cube preview it doesn't really look how you might think it would look it it uh it has to stretch this 
flat surface over this 3D surface. And this is actually where the term UV mapping comes from. Since in 3D we deal with X, Y, and Z coordinates, which you should be very familiar with at this point, when we work with 2D, in order to not get confused when we talk about X and Y, sorry about that noise in the background, not, in order to not get confused about X and Y on the flat surface, we call them U and V. So U direction is one way, like left and right, on the flat surface, and V direction would be up and down. And then we just have X, Y, and Z in the 3D, in the three-dimensional plane. Okay. So with that said, you can come down. Well, let's re let's render this first and see if it looks like it. It looks here, and I'll explain why it won't. So render it, and you'll notice we have the texture only on the the one material. So if you come over and look, simple text is underneath top, which is the material on my cube. So we need simple text on sides as well. So if you go to the materials and select sides, you can come and you can apply. Oh, this has the default text. That's why. Okay, so I'm just going to delete this one. Add a new. Actually, you don't even need to add a new. You just click on this and go to click on the checkerboard here next to the new and go to simple text because we already set that up. And click here on both and then click on the square to see how it'll look and that looks just like it should in the picture except for that the material underneath is teal on top now it's stretched out and it looks pretty ugly um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to play with the mapping if you come down there's a uh, menu under mapping where coordinates you should pretty much always leave generated unless you know what you're doing. And then projection is what you want to change. Right now it's projecting this cube as a flat surface. We can change it to be a cube. And what that will do is change this. It'll make the material appear as like one material per side of the cube. Let me show you now. So you get something like this. And notice we didn't change that on the top we can also change that on the, the the top material as well because that texture is actually different and see it's still projected it's flat we'll change that to cube and you shouldn't see any difference just because of how it was stretched out so this is what happens if you change the projection to cube it'll take this one image and it will put it on every single side so what happens if you want to and this this is leading up to what UV maps are good for. What happens if you want to put, say, one image up here on the top and different images on each side? Well, do you have to put a different material on every single side and then put its own texture on every single side? You could. That is one way to do it, and it would be extremely cumbersome, especially with, let's say we wanted to do it on a modeled human head with thousands of faces it's going to be very cumbersome and it's not going to be practical so there's this really cool technique that I want to teach you today called UV mapping UV mapping lets you take one texture and tell Blender how you want to cut it up and how you want it to, to fit on there it's actually really simple and I'll break into it right now so let's go back to the 3D view window and for simplicity's sake, I'm going to come to the material and I'm going to delete this um, top texture. I'm just going to delete it. And I'm going to call the sides. I'm actually just going to say matte. And I'm going to assign it because we still have that face selected. No, we don't have that face selected. So we need to select that top face again and just assign the same matte as everywhere else. So double check. Okay, we're good to go. We just have the one material now for the whole thing, and that material has one texture. Perfect. We're actually going to delete this simple text too. We're going to come back and put on a UV made texture that I also made in GIMP quickly. Nothing fan, nothing special, just just something simple. Okay, now we're ready to do a UV map. And what we need to do is we need to essentially tell the tell blender which lines which edges we want to cut to make this into a flat shape 
So the way that we tell Blender that we want to cut this shape is we go into edit mode and we do edge select and we just select there we go we just select the edges that we want to cut and there are several different ways to do this it honestly helps to turn on turn off the occlude geometry but the way I'm going to do it is essentially these three right here and then two going back and two going back so don't do the bottom here and I'll show you what that cuts it into. If you took a real real paper cube and you cut it like that, you could lay it flat very nicely. So once you select the edges that you want to cut it, you want it to be cut at, you go over on the, the left side under the tools and you go to UV mapping and section and hit mark seam. And it's hard to tell because the object's red, but it'll make a red line on all of those seams. Even when it's deselected, you'll see a red edge there. Now, all that's left to do is to have the computer cut it up. But this is something I always mess up on and forget. So make sure you pay attention here. You always need to select the entire object before you click UV. Um, before you click, before you click on the oh, I just lost it unwrap button. Unwrap is what will tell Blender to automatically cut it around those seams that we marked but make sure the whole thing is selected or else it'll cause you some grief. Now, there's also, if you come up here on the info header, there's this little um, Windows button. If you click that and go down to UV editing, it'll change you to a, a view that's set up well for UV editing. Otherwise, you can follow the header on here. This is the UV slash image editor. This is where your renders will show up as well. So with that view set up here, and with all of your faces selected, come and click Unwrap, and then click Unwrap. And you'll see it cut up my cube into this shape. Perfect. Now what that means is for any texture of this square, of this square size, it will be applied just like is shown. So most of the texture will not even be applied to the cube, just this like cross shape, if you will. And if you have a specific texture that you're working with, like I do, it helps to load it in. Just go to Image, Open, and then find the file here, UV Mat, Open, and this is one I made. Now, don't freak out when it does this. This, this uh, image editor works just like the 3D view window. You can scroll to zoom out, and you can... Okay, so if I apply the image, or if I apply this texture to this object with this UV map, what will happen is exactly what you see for each square here will be applied to each face here. So I want to, I want to set this up better. I, like I said, all of the 3D view window tools apply, so I'm just going to hit S to scale this a bit, and I'm going to hit G to grab, and I got pretty lucky doing that. So we're not done. We have not applied this texture. We've only used it as a reference to set up our UV map for any given texture. If we come in here and we hit F12, we still have a red material. Nothing has changed. And I can't stress that enough. You're not applying the texture here. You're just telling the UV map what part of the texture to cut out and apply to which face. All right. With that said, we're done with the UV map. We don't need to save it or anything at this point. Just click up here again and go back to default to change your view back to default. Now, under mat, um, our, our red material, let's get a new texture and let's call it, doesn't matter what we call it, make it an image texture just like before, but this time load in your specially made um, UV material and don't really worry about the preview because the preview doesn't take into account the um, UV map. And by the way, that black is alpha again, so it should be transparent. Now scroll down and under the mapping, instead of generated this time, select UV. You don't have to select map. It'll, it'll know the default map because there's only one, but you can select it if you want. 
and then leave projection flat because the UV map is flat. So if you change projection, it'll it'll screw things up pretty bad. Make sure projection is flat if you're using a UV map because a UV map is for a flat texture. Now, that's all we need to do. We need to set coordinates to UV, which have already been set. Let's hit F12, and we get our box, just like we wanted. Remember, some of that black is alpha, and so the red you see along the corners is just seeping through from the material, and our texture is applied exactly as we want it. So that is kind of complicated. There's a lot of places to mess up, but really trial and error is the, the best way to do this one. What you want to do as far as a workflow is you'll want to come in and you can actually, after you decide how you want to cut up your object, and um, after you say are in the UV editor, you can actually come over to UV clicked on the wrong button. You can come over to the UVs menu and you can export the UV layout and it'll give you a picture file with just the outline of your UV. So you can actually take that picture file and you can make a texture out of it knowing exactly where the UV is going to pull stuff for its texture. So I hope I wasn't too confusing with this tutorial. If you have comments or questions please please do ask because that's probably the best way to learn this stuff and hopefully it was helpful. Thanks for watching guys and I will see you next week.